Someone who's well versed in all the detail, the players involved, and the fairly shadowy backroom of Labor's organisational machine in New South Wales is New South Wales State Political Editor at the Australian newspaper, Andrew Clennell. He joins me now live from Sydney. Andrew, great to have you on the show. I tell you what, this is about as, as bad as it gets for Labor because this is not a one-off for New South Wales Labor. This is a pattern of behaviour now going back 15 or 20 years. It's brought down governments before. Uh, a lot of very heavy hitters out of the Labor Party, many in the Parliament today, have come through that job as General Secretary. You've got to wonder who else is implicated, how far this goes and what sort of damage it will do. Do you think uh, tomorrow and the evidence from Ernest Wong will be the end of it? Well, no, and the reason I don't is because they're talking about a four- to six-week inquiry, so why would you need that over one allegation? So, uh, at the very least... Uh, Peter, it seems ICAC are fishing for more. I mean, they confiscated Sam Desti or took away Sam Destiari's phone uh, at the end of evidence today, and that's supposedly over inconsistency between him and Kayla Manane over their meeting in, in September 2016. But nevertheless, you, uh, you, you get the feeling, and you often see in these inquiries, they're looking for more as they go along. Uh, they're hoping that some uh, people are a bit more talkative. And uh, they can find out a bit more. And uh, I think, you know, we will see some more um, devastating revelations for Labor. I think uh, I'd, I'd be surprised if we didn't. Are Labor, are Labor insiders worried? Look, this is just a full-blown crisis for Labor. I mean, you talk to people and they start saying, oh, well, we might not be in for eight years at the state level and six years at the federal level. And... I mean, you know, three years is a long time, a couple of years is a long time in politics, but this really hurts the brand after all the obeyed stuff. And the irony, when I, mean, mm -hmm. when I was listening to everything you were saying there, Peter, and looking at Sam Dastiari's ridiculous performance this afternoon, is um, that Dastiari and the other head office officials set these rules. So, I mean, you're talking about the laws they have to obey. Now, these tripped up the libs big time in 2014. They were found to have illegally... <laughs> Uh, used hundreds of thousands worth of donations and they had to return the money uh, because of two things, a ban on developer donations and caps of 5000 a year on, on individual donations. Labor introduced those laws in 2009 with the developers and late 2010 with the caps because they wanted to stuff the Libs. It was clear that they were going to get smashed at the state election and the Libs were going to be in for a long time. So they introduced these little tripwires. And what's happened is not only have lab Labor politicians been undone by them in this week, but the very head office officials who would have dreamt up some of those rules. I mean, it's just bizarre. And for Dastiari to get up there and go, oh, well, maybe we need to ban donations altogether. Well, mate, you had a good go at setting the rules that your own people including your own protégé, Kayla Manane, have been stuffed up by today. Yeah, I, I do listen with interest the number of Labor characters that have been flooding this network and others all, all day, saying that we really need now to have things like public funding, we have to change disclosure rules, we have to change the donation rules. Uh, that's all pee and thimble stuff, to stop everyone talking about it, what's going on here. You can change the rules, but the same people will break the rules. Regardless of the rules, you either have probity in the system and you abide by the rules, or you don't have a system at all. Now, I don't think changing the rules weeds this sort of skullduggery out. It's bred into the marrow of the bones of some of Peter, these Peter, they change the rules. And, you know, my question is... But, yeah, but that, that's the point. So you change them again, they'll find a way to backdoor them. What you have to do is do what ICAC's trying to do and actually... Uh, enforce the laws that we have got, that most people in politics uh, abide by. But, but what I found really striking is Manane had the sense to think there was something dodgy with $100,000 in, in an Aldi shopping bag, right? Good on her for that. She does the right thing. I don't think taking advice from Sam Vestiari is all that smart, but she does the right thing about going and seeking counsel from the lawyer. It is alleged in her evidence, not his yet, uh, that he told her, don't worry about it and basically try and hide it. I'm paraphrasing there, of course, but that's also of a concern, isn't it? I think there's a number of issues there. Look, first of all, the, uh, her evidence is she doesn't remember seeing the shopping bag with the cash, but her evidence is that Ernest Wong um, uh, suggested that uh, at least one of the donations that Chinese Friends of Labor had come from Huang Zhangmo, as I understand it. So 
that's that's kind of the discrepancy there. But um, uh, look, I mean, I just think, as you just said, uh, what appalling judgment to go to Sam Dastiari, and it sort of showed that Sam Dastiari was pulling the strings in there, as we all thought. You know, I mean, they, they had three characters who should never have been General Secretary in Kayla, Dastiari and Jamie Clements. That's now apparent. And a culture there that, that, you know, made that the case. I mean, Kayla got the job at 28. Sam got the job at 26. They were put there because the Svengali's like to still control them, it seems to me. And, and these people were in no shape to be taking those jobs because she was making appalling judgments like that. The lawyer's evidence will be very telling and very interesting, I've got to say. You, you make a good point there. But... Ultimately, nine, I think nine days before she meets Dastiari and stays in his car for an hour and talks about it or whatever she did, um, he's just quit the federal front bench for taking $40,000 from the same bloke, Wang Zhang Mo, uh, in order to pay for a legal bill. So it's interesting those comments he's making. He's saying, don't, don't worry about the money from the lawyers. Maybe he's thinking you can get a Chinese donor to pay for them. I did. So, you know, she knows he's quit because of scandal. She knows he's quit over this bloke. And who of anyone in the, you know, the 8 million people in New South Wales does she consult about what to do with this when she thinks a crime's been committed? The bloke who's, who's basically just quit the federal front bench because of his dealings with the same guy. I mean, it's just bizarre behaviour. It's not the sort of behaviour you should see from someone running a political party, a major political party in Australia. I have no sympathy for Kayla Minane. Yeah, I think the egos get ahead of people, though, in politics. They get so far up the greasy pole they think it's not going to hit them or it won't be found out or that they can keep secrets amongst people in politics. In my experience, you can't trust anyone in politics to keep a secret. Mm. Uh, it will all mm -hmm. come out and it's coming out in ICAC. Well, I tell you what, Andrew Clennell, it'll be fascinating uh, watching tomorrow, listening tomorrow to hear what Ernest Wong has to say. And I'm with you. I can't wait to hear the lawyer's uh, evidence before ICAC as well. Thanks for your time tonight. Thank you.